Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. In this lecture, I'm going to explain the data set that we'll be using in the partial list of squares structural equation modeling using the SmartPLS software. And I will also set up a model, okay? So that's what we're going to do in this lecture. So here we have our canvas and here is our data sets, right? And to mention to you, actually we have published a paper using the data set and that is the paper. And this paper is freely accessible. You can download it if you have the link or if you just Google for it, okay? And here in the supplementary data here on Appendix C, that's where we actually provided also the data file in Excel format, okay? So if you just open this, let me show you how it looks like, okay? So if I open that, it looks like this. Here you have the data and here you have the metadata. Here we have the respondents and then here we have different variable names. And what does each of, the, each of these variable names mean? That's what we have here in the metadata, if you look here. So for each of the variable names, we have the description and we have the measurement, okay? So that's what we have here. And here you can see that like these ones, BT1 to BD7, they are bus tangible, and then BD1, these are bus driver's quality. And then we have some variables on bus management company, and then we have some uh, variables on bus terminal. So here you see, to measure the, ser the, the quality of the bus terminal, we asked five questions, right? To measure the empathy of the bus service provider, we asked five questions, right? To measure customer satisfaction, we asked three questions, okay? So normally these kind of variables where we cannot measure it properly by only asking one question. Those cases we use normally these multiple items or questions and we form these latent variables. So here customer satisfaction is all latent variable measured by three items or three observed variables, right? Perceived value is our latent variable measured by three items or three variables, right? So that's how we do it. So we have word of mouth, we have environmental performance, then we have a variable where we consider hybrid bus service quality compared to the previous bus service. So here, this paper is about measuring the bus service quality of newly introduced hybrid bus service in the city of Kristiansand in, in Agder in Norway, right? And normally people had three options here. So one would be an ors that, okay, the new one is not, is ors than previous one. And two would be like same, there is no difference. and uh, two would be like same and three would be like better. The new one is better, right? And also we had a question for life satisfaction measurement. Initially, the purpose of this variable was to use it in common method bias uh, estimation. But later we actually used it in uh, as a one of the main uh, exogenous, uh, endogenous variables, okay? And also we coded a variable whether we collected multiple times the data. So it was one in like uh, in deep winter and one was uh, not really winter. So we also considered if the seasonality had an effect on the results, okay? So that's our data structure. So if you want to run uh, this data in a PLSM software, you actually have to save it as a CSV file because as I mentioned you earlier, Smart PLS can run only CSV format file. So you would normally go here, save as, and then you would save it as a comma delimited file. And then that file you can use in a Smart PLS, okay? So here is the correlation from last time. I'm just going to close it. And here in the same paper, if you look here in Appendix B, that's where you can see a estimated model using the PLSM software. Okay, so here what we did, we had the life satisfaction of the main endogenous variable, which is affected by customer satisfaction. And customer satisfaction is affected by bus tangible, bus driver's quality, empathy, and environmental factors, environmental performance, okay? So here, this is our main endogenous variable, this is our mediating variable, and these are our exogenous variables, or independent variables, whatever you call them, okay? And here you will notice that we actually dropped a few of the items. For example, here BT3 was dropped because it was not fitting well, okay? It was having low R-factor loading, so we dropped that. 
So here we have BD1, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here we have all of them. For Empathy, we also have all of them. For Environmental Performance, we have all of them. And for the rest of it, we have all of them. Okay. We'll find the detail of each of the measurement items in the data set in the Excel format. But also here in the paper, you will find details about them, right? So if you look here, if you go up, you will see that we have a table. Here is our table, construct and their respective items, okay? So we have a table here, you see this one was dropped, right? And we have the factor loadings and also here in the paper, we explain from where these items were picked from, okay? So normally, you can have the items from previously published studies. You can also develop the items yourself. If you want to study something very new, uh, which has not been studied, then you have to develop the items yourself. But that process is a bit long process and I will cover that process in another video, okay? But now here, what we are going to do is we are actually going to estimate this model here, okay, hypothesized model. This model or the estimated model that I have shown you here in appendix B, this model, we are going to estimate now this model. But before we do the estimation, first we are only going to set up the model. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, six latent variables. So now here we come on our canvas. Our data is loaded successfully, it's green. Okay, that's great. And here we are in our canvas and we are going to create six latent variables. So you just have to click here in the latent variable, just click, and then I click here one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we have six latent variables. Then you just click here, select, or you can press also escape to deselect the latent variable tab, okay? So after you deselect it, now you can actually move them as you like to make them look nicer, okay? So let's say I keep them like this. And here to rename the variable names, you can right click and you go to rename. And here now you can say it was life satisfaction, right? And then for the second one, it was customer satisfaction. And then we had bus tangible. Then we have bus driver's quality. Then we had empathy. And then we have environmental performance. Okay, so we have our latent variables uh, kind of there, but they are not yet formatted properly, right? Because we haven't put the items, okay? So now what we're going to do, like for example, for bus tangible from here, if I want to estimate the same model, I know that it's BT1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So I'm just going to select them. BT1, I press Control, BT2, four, five, six, and also the seven. So I keep pressing control and then click on the items and then I just click and drag them on bus tangible. Now I have my first latent variable ready. Okay, now let's go to bus drivers here. All four of them are sequentially. So I click on the first one, then I press the shift button on my keyboard and I click the last one. All of them are selected. Now I move it here. Done. For empathy, what I'm going to do is this one and press shift and click on the fifth one and then drag them all here. Great. Then for the environment, we called it EP. So I click the first one, then press shift, call, click the last one and then drag all of them here. For customer satisfaction, it's CS, so I click the first one, then the third one, and I move them here. And for life satisfaction, I click the first one, then I click the press shift and click the last one, and then I drag them here. So I actually have all my latent variables set up here. Great, right? So now, you know, to make things look a bit nicer, you can maybe you like to move them a little bit around so that it looks a bit nicer. 
Maybe let's say for example for this latent variable, it would be nice to have the items on the top instead of on the left side. So you right click here and then you say align indicators to the top and it goes to the top, right? Looks nicer, I guess. For this one, maybe it would be nice to have them on the bottom. So you say it's, it goes to the bottom, right? Not bad. For customer satisfaction, maybe let's keep it also on the top. And for life satisfaction, we can move them on the right. We move them on the right. Now here, this part here, if you click here, it goes, uh, it closes. If you click here on the on this color palette, it opens up. So if you close this, you can see the full window. It looks nicer. And here, what you actually have is that you can control the design of this, okay? And so for example, let's say if I select this, 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 I, I, I pressed to select all of them, of the all, all, all of them, all, all the circles only, to select all the circles only, what I have to do is I have to press, let's say, control. So I click this one, then I press control, the next one, the next one, the next one, this one, and this one. So now, let's say I want to change their fill to, let's say, white. Okay, I right click here, assign to background. So when I try to actually change the colors here, it is not working at the moment. And that's because first I have to connect the models. Okay, so first we have to connect them. So because now they are there, we have the latent variables, but it's not a real measurement model. To make this a measurement model, we have to connect them. So to connect them, I click here on the connect button, then I drag one, I click once here, and then I drag it here. So here's one link. Click on bus tangible, click on customer satisfaction. Click on bus driver's quality, click on customer satisfaction. Click on empathy, then click on customer satisfaction. Click on environmental, performance and then when I will click here you will see everything will turn blue okay actually turned white and with the background so the color I selected earlier that was applied here now after selecting the model okay so now that means that normally if you have not selected any color then it will turn blue from red it will turn to blue okay and that would mean that now you can estimate the model. Until it turns, it changes your color from red, from the by default color, you could not really estimate the model, okay? So now I'm going to click on select again to deselect the connect, or you could have just pressed escape, it would do the same thing. So now I'm going to click on the color palette again. So now let's say if I want to change the border of the circles, the latent variables, I click this one and I press control, click this, 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 and this one. Then now I'm going to say assign it to border, okay? And I'm going to, let's say, increase my border size, okay? So you can increase or decrease. And inside, I can keep it white. I can also, let's say, assign to background this gray one or maybe an orange color, something like that, you know? So how about this two? Yeah, whatever you want, okay? So let's say we, we, we keep the red to the border and we keep white to the background. It looks pretty nice to me, okay? So that's how we keep it and we have now set up our model and in the next video, we are going to actually estimate this model and we are going to see if we get more or less the same result as here. Note that we will not get exactly the same result because in Smart PLS, when we'll be doing the estimations, especially the path coefficient estimations, it follows a bootstrap process. And in bootstrap, every time you do it, you will get a slightly different result, but it will get more or less the same result, okay? If your data is valid, if and if your model is valid, and if you're not doing anything wrong. It should give more or less identical result, but slightly different. So in the next video, we'll do the estimation of this, but now we have set up the model. So in the next video, we are going to estimate the model using the, first we are going to do the measurement model estimation using what we call confirmatory composite analysis. And then after that, we will do a path model estimation, okay? 
So thank you for watching. I hope you find it useful.